right, so now we're going to look at compositionals for the variance or standard deviation. Okay, so take a minute to read the problem. So, we're doing a confidence interval for the standard deviation. We know the population is normally distributed. We know our sample size, okay, sample mean, and standard deviation. Okay, so now we got to pick our formula. Again, once you know you're doing a confidence interval, you got to figure out what you know, pick the formula, then do what the formula says. Okay, so, our parameter of interest this time is sigma. Okay, so, Right. On our formula sheet, we're after sigma. We're going to go through our questions. Obviously, we don't know sigma. If we knew sigma, we would not be trying to estimate sigma right now. Okay. Now, the next question is, is the population normally distributed? Okay. Here the answer is yes. Our population is normally distributed. Now, you've got to be very careful about that normal distribution. Right? In this case, it makes a huge difference. Okay. Our sample size. As long as our population is normally distributed, the sample size here doesn't really matter. Okay, so our sampling distribution, right, n minus 1 times s squared over sigma squared yields a chi squared score. Okay, so that is our basis, that's our foundation for what we're going to do. And after a little bit of algebra, we end up with this formula over here saying sigma squared is between these two numbers. Okay, now. I mentioned that you got to be real careful about this normal population assumption. Right? If your population is not normally distributed, then these formulas for a sampling distribution and for the confidence interval okay, really do not yield uh, results that are reliable. Okay? So we got to be very careful about this. Okay? You can always use the formulas, right? but if it turns out your population is not normally distributed, then the numbers you have don't really mean anything. All right. So, but in our problem, we do have a normal distribution, so it's not going to be an issue. All right, so we chose our formula. Okay, we know n is 18, so n minus 1 will be 17. We know s, so therefore we can plug in s and we'll have s squared. All right, we need to find our two chi-squared scores. So we start by drawing the graph. Remember the chi-squared graph is not symmetric. It's not centered at zero, so these are not plus and minus the same number for our cutoffs. There are literally two different cutoffs. We have a left and a right cutoff. Okay. We're going to use the chi-squared chart. So for each one of these, we need to know the area to the right of that chi-squared score. Okay. So the area to the right of the right chi-squared score is 0.005. And the area to the right of the left chi-squared score is 0.995. So we're going to look those up on the chart. Okay? And we should get these chi-squared scores. Now, you should be familiar with this uh, from past work in the class. Okay? All right, now that we have our chi-squared scores, we're going to plug them in. Now, pay close attention to the formula. Notice that the right chi-squared score goes in the fraction that appears on the left. Okay? Also... The constant formula, as stated right here, is for the variance, sigma squared. But we want to do a confidence interval for the standard deviation, sigma. So if sigma squared is between those two numbers, then sigma is going to be between the square root of those two numbers. All right, so now I'm going to plug in all my values. Again, n minus 1 was 17. S is 131. Okay. Our right chi-squared score is 35.718. I'm going to plug all that into the calculator exactly as it appears on the screen. Okay, square root of 17 times 131 squared divided by 35.718. Okay, let the calculator do all the work for you. Okay, and when you do that for both of our uh, terms here, you should end up with a standard deviation that is between 90.38 and 22, uh, 226.29. Okay, this is as an inequality. All right. Now, notice here, because our graph is not symmetric, our confidence interval wasn't of the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error format. That happens only when you have t and, chi, uh, t and z scores as the basis of your confidence intervals. All right. You can also write this as an inequality. 
or in addition to inequality, you can write this as an interval if you want. Typically, it's uh, the inequality. All right, now let's look at one more example. Okay, so go ahead and read the second example. Again, positively if you need to. So we want to find a 90% composite for the variance. That's sigma squared, the population variance, all right, in the number of uh, steps UT students walk on campus per day. So we know that the population is normally distributed. All right. We have a sample size of 20. We know our sample mean and standard deviation. All right. So now we've got to choose our formula. Okay. This time I'm interested in the variance, sigma squared. And we don't know sigma, otherwise we would just square that. And we know sigma squared. Again, we need the population to be normally distributed. In our case, it is. And our sample size doesn't really matter if we have these conditions met. Okay, so here are our formulas and specifically for the confidence interval, this is the last formula we just got done using example one. You know, I'll remind you, if you violate this assumption of normality, then these formulas over here do not give you reliable results. Okay, now we have a normal distribution, so we're all right. We have to find our Chi-squared scores, we already know N and S. Okay, so we want to be 90% confident this time. Area in the middle, 0 0.90. Area on each end, 0 0.05. Again, we look up on the chi-squared chart, 0.95 and 0 0.05, because those are the areas to the right of our respective constant limits. All right, we're going to plug in our numbers. All right, and this time, I want to leave sigma squared in the middle because I want an estimate can find a 90% confidence interval for the variance in the number of steps. Okay, so multiply all that out, we end up with these two gigantic numbers. But again, look at what we have. The number of steps varies significantly from student to student. In our sample, that was 390 uh, three steps, as how much the number of steps varied from student to student. Right. And our variance here is the average squared distance from the mean, not just the average distance from the mean. So when you start taking numbers like 393 and squaring them, they become humongous in a hurry. All right. If you really prefer to write this as an interval, you can. Um, typically, we would write this as in an inequality. All right. So that's the difference between doing a console for the variance and for the standard deviation that we did in number one. In number one, we had to take the square root because we wanted sigma and not sigma squared. If you have any questions about the topics covered in this video, or anything else that's happening in your statistical reasoning class, talk to your instructor, go to their office hours, or take advantage of the free tutoring available in the Math Tutorial Center. Good luck, and go Vols!